There's another statue coming down in the U.S., but this one doesn't have anything to do with the Confederacy, not even in the South. It's not Christopher Columbus either, but rather a founding father of our country. The city of New York says it will remove a statue of Thomas Jefferson from the city council chambers, where it's been for 106 years. The city council's Black, Latino, and Asian caucus has long objected to its presence. Jefferson was a key author, of course, of our Declaration of Independence, but he was also a slave owner. Here's what one New York City Council member had to say about the statue's removal. The United Nations has declared slavery a crime against humanity, and we shouldn't elevate those persons who profited and benefited from slavery by putting them on a pedestal. Jefferson also fathered at least six children with enslaved servant Sally Hemings. Joining me now today is a descendant of Jefferson, Shannon Lanier. It's great to have you, the sixth great-grandson of Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings. Uh, Shannon, let me start with your reaction to the, the vote to remove the statue in New York. The, the, the debate certainly isn't new, but that vote is. Yeah, you know, it's a, definitely a step closer to equality and helping people feel that they are not being belittled or downtrodden. And if they feel that they are offended by that, then I think that helps start the conversation about making everyone feel welcomed wherever they go. So it is unfortunate that we are at this point where we have to make these tough decisions. But I think it's a good thing to make people feel better as taxpayers when they're walking in those same hallways every day trying to do what's right for justice in the law, that they feel equal to those that are also there and don't feel like they're being in some form or fashion belittled by the fact that the statue is there looking over them. We heard from a supporter of removing the statue. Here's another clip from an opponent. Let's listen. We'll get your comment after. I just wanted to say that Jefferson was born into a situation of slavery that existed for thousands of years. He was opposed to the institution his entire life, and he took several steps to abolish it. So where are we on this debate, Shannon? I mean, does it come down to using the statue as a, as a teaching tool and addressing these things rather than removing it? You know, I think I used to give Jefferson a pass as well and say, but he was a founding father, he was a president, but he was a man who knew what right from wrong. Yes, the fact that he tried to abolish it proved he knew it was wrong, but the fact that he never freed his own slaves proves that he was wrong also. And so, you know, it, it can't be, you know, two eyes of the same sword. You have to look at it in not only contemporary eyes, but also in historical eyes and judge that man by his character. This was a man who owned more than 600 people throughout right. his lifetime and died with more than 100 slaves at his plantation. He did not free them. Uh, friends of his freed their slaves, so he had the opportunity and knew other people that were doing it, and yet he did not do it. Now, I don't think that he should be erased from history. He's a great part of this foundation of this country. He did many amazing things for this country. I think we have to see him as his whole totality of who he was and what he did. Yes, he was a great founding father and a third president, but he was also a man who owned people and knew it was wrong, so we have to see him as his, this whole man. And that's why I believe the statue should be put in an educational or okay. historical environment so people can learn about him, not erase him from history, learn the truth about history. And that's the thing that people are missing here. We want to teach the truth, not a one-sided, sanitized, heroic aspect of who these people were in historical concepts. Shannon, I'm sure you've heard people who will say, okay, well then where do we draw the line? I mean, what about the University of Virginia? I mean, Jefferson watched it being built from Monticello. Should we, you know, change the name of that or, you know, change how we look at that university? Well, you'll be surprised. The University of Virginia is doing many things right, as well as Monticello, to educate people about the history of Thomas Jefferson, who he was, and his whole story. They're not just saying he was a founding father that did great things. Monticello is working hard to restore all the aspects of slavery of Jefferson. 50 years ago, you went to Monticello, they act like he didn't even have slaves. It didn't exist. Now they're telling the full story about how integral they were to his survival, how important they were to him even being able to become and be the president because of all the things that his slaves did as geniuses that they were to build Monticello, to tear it down, to build it up again. Right. They were educated. They were smart. They were craftsmen. So yes, they are educating people about it. And I think that's what makes it different. It's not just 
a statue that's put up looking down on people. It's something that's put up in context of mm. who he was, what he did, and let people decide on how they feel about him now that they have the full picture yeah. and all the information. Yeah, fantastic insight, Shannon. It's great to have you. I know the president of UVA did say that uh, we will not walk away from Thomas Jefferson, but great perspective tonight. You can also see Shannon Lanier, by the way, on the Black News Channel. He's one of the lead anchors there. Also the sixth great grandson of Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings. Shannon, it's great to see you. Thanks for the time.